Hey everybody, JCB here with The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest, Awesomest, Awesome List. Today I'll be counting on the top 10 most annoying things people do in public. Number 10, speakerphone conversations. Remember those chirp phones? Singular called it push to talk. Basically it was a goddamn walkie talkie built into your phone and it was annoying as hell. People would stand in line at the grocery store and have full blown private conversations over walkie talkie. The volume was always super loud and you'd hear personal details you didn't want to know about a stranger's love lives, health issues, and body parts. I'm so glad those kinds of phones are basically extinct now. What a stupid idea. But do you know what the difference is between having a conversation like that and having it over speakerphone? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's still annoying as hell. I don't want to hear about your herpes or the fact that you have the first confirmed case of mouth crabs. Just stop it. Number nine, getting way too excited about sports. I get it, you're really passionate about your team. You may even have real money riding on the outcome. And in the comfort of your own home, by all means, hoot and holler all you want. Jump up and down on your couch like you're Tom Cruise. I don't care. But when you're in public, like a sports bar or a pizza place that happens to have the game on, use some restraint, please. Getting angry in public makes you look like a big stupid gorilla and makes everyone around you wonder if there is something broken inside your brain. Angry or not, you look like an idiot. You're either getting overly excited about a game like the kid who just got a Nintendo 64, or you're raging like a lunatic crystal meth addict who's so angry like this kid who's trying to shove a remote up his ass after his mom took away World of Warcraft. This is what you look like to me, shoving a remote control up your own ass while you throw a temper tantrum over something completely stupid and pointless like a game. Number eight, exposing the world to your horrible demon seed. Here's the scenario. You're in the waiting room of a doctor's office, sitting quietly. It's a professional environment. A hundred feet away, there are patients literally being told that they're going to die or seriously ill. You're filling out the same basic information you just filled out on the two previous pages of this stupid form, when suddenly you get hit in the face with a football like you're fucking Marsha Brady. Not Tom Brady, Marsha Brady. Look it up, kids. What the hell just happened? Well, that little six-year-old hell child who was screaming and shitting and slobbering for over an hour in this waiting room just threw a football at your face, while mom repeated the word sweetie a hundred thousand times, attempting to talk the little psychotic bastard down like it's a hostage negotiation. If your kid is acting like a psychopath and your response is anything other than immediately taking the little shit outside for the beating of a lifetime, you're a terrible parent. Yes, under the right circumstances, I am an advocate for spanking. All authority is derived from the threat of violence or detention, and your child can use a little bit of both. But even if you took them out to the parking lot and gave them a spanking so hard they still feel it at their first parole hearing, you're still a bad parent if the child had no reason to be there in the first place. I used to work in a doctor's office and every single day we'd have people show up with their entire family to an appointment that was for one person. Seriously, groups of six or more would fill the waiting room because one of them had an appointment and apparently everybody had to come. If you had the type of child that would have been cast out of the village in olden times, leave that little shit at home. Nobody wants to watch you chase it around the grocery store saying, Come here, sweetie, sweetie, put that down, sweetie. Leave the old lady's oxygen tank alone, sweetie. Sweetie, I'm counting to ten, sweetie. One, two, sweetie, three. Remember what we talked about, sweetie. Four. You might as well just send him straight to jail right now because honest to God, he's gonna end up there anyway. Number seven, holding up the express lane at the grocery store. It's bad enough that the 15 items of less lane always seems to have that one cashier who doesn't know what they're doing. They have to have the manager come over and explain things, override certain items, it's just a mess. The point of the express lane is to quickly get you out of the store with the few items you wanted to buy. So why does the person in front of me have an entire cart full of groceries when the sign clearly says 15 items or fewer? Why are they trying to use a check when the sign clearly says cash or card only? Why are they having the cashier go behind the little glass box to get out a pack of cigarettes? Or go get a lottery ticket? Why are they running all the across the store to get this person a bottle of wine from the liquor cabinet? Why are they going all the way to the chip aisle to get the proper brand of chips that was specified by the coupon? And oh my god, the coupons! Why are they using so many goddamn coupons? This is the express lane. What's that? You don't know your debit pin? Well, let me just sit here and wait for 10 minutes while you rummage through your overly filled purse looking for whatever the hell you think you're going to find in there that could possibly help you with this situation. I understand the cashiers accommodate these people because store policy is to offer great customer service, but it kind of defeats the purpose of having an express lane and ruins the customer service for the other people standing in line. I would love a no bullshit lane. You get in line, throw your items on the belt, pay with cash only, take your items and leave. Anything that deviates from that simple process gets you kicked out of line. Go join the rest of your kind in those lanes over there. This one's for people who have their shit together. Number six, going out in public in your pajamas. Seriously, just stop. 
I mean, I understand if you don't want to do your hair and makeup just to go out and get a late night snack, but it doesn't take any time at all to put pants on. Of course, if you're just going through the drive through a Jack in the Box at 3 a.m., I don't care what you wear, but I've seen grown ass people wearing footy pajamas in line at the bank in the afternoon. The P and PJs doesn't stand for public. I propose we shame these people using the power of the internet. I introduce to you, hashtag PJ shame. The next time you see one of these people in public, just snap a picture with your phone, share it to your favorite social network with the hashtag PJ shame. We can end this together. Number five, blasting music through your cell phone speaker. Musicians spend thousands and thousands of dollars on recording equipment and microphones and studio space to record the most pristine audio possible. Studio engineers spend countless hours cleaning up imperfections, making slight adjustments to the overall tone and stereo image in order to squeeze out every little detail of audio fidelity they can manage. And then you go and blast that song through a $2 speaker the size of a fingertip in your phone. Great job. But even if you don't care about any of that stuff, you have to admit that it's really annoying to hear somebody else's music blasting at full volume out of a shitty speaker on their phone. I don't care if this is your jam. I'm going to jam that cell phone down your fucking throat if you don't put some headphones on. Number four, watching a video while people are trying to have a conversation. Basically, I hate it when you're having a nice conversation with a couple of friends, and then one of them pulls out their cell phone and starts watching a video at full volume. It would be different if they were already watching a video and we all came into the room having a loud conversation, or if they wanted to show us a video because it relates to the conversation, or they wanted to start a new conversation, or they just wanted to share an experience with the group. That's all understandable. I'm specifically talking about the people who suddenly decide to watch a video and then crank the volume up because they can't hear it over the conversation they just removed themselves from. Seriously, how is this different from grabbing an air horn and just pressing it the whole time your friends are trying to talk? Again, put some goddamn headphones on. Number three, stopping in the middle of an aisle. I absolutely hate it when I'm in a busy grocery store trying to quickly get the thing I need to buy when suddenly the person in front of me just stops in the middle of the aisle for no reason. It's like their brain just shuts down and they stand there like a zombie, most likely wondering where the medication section is because they forgot to refill their brain dead pills and now they can't brain. It's incredibly annoying. You wouldn't do that in your car, would you? I mean, seriously, if you just stopped in the middle of the freeway, you'd definitely get a ticket. That is if someone didn't rear end you first. You could seriously die for being so inconsiderate. That gives me an idea. If you're a serial killer and you're watching this, focus on these people. If I'm on your jury, I will vote not guilty. Number two, spreading your sickness. If you're sick, stay home. That's the long and short of it. Now I understand that some asshole employers will fire you if you take a sick day, and if that's your reality, then I'm sorry and you get a free pass. But for everybody else, the people who have paid sick leave, who have vacation days, who are in school, unemployed, self-employed, if you have any reason to stay home, stay home. The world shouldn't remind me of a zombie apocalypse every time cold and flu season comes around. Walking into a business and seeing hordes of pale, fever-ridden, sweaty, oozing, undead zombies hacking and coughing all around me is disgusting and terrifying. Just stay home until you feel better, seriously. And number one, forcing your beliefs on others. Far be it from me to tell people what they can and cannot believe, just don't push it on me. It's rude. Don't show up to my door at 5 a.m. in the morning and tell me I'm a heathen. Don't try to save my soul in the middle of a public place because I don't agree with your beliefs. Don't hand me those little hate-filled comics designed to scare children into believing something they otherwise would never be exposed to. And please stop asking me if I found Jesus. The answer is no. But to be fair, I've never been grave digging in the Middle East. The reason this question is stupid is because I live in America, and in this day and age, everyone has heard of Jesus. You could stop spreading the word. He's not some underground indie band playing a local coffee shop. He's fucking Jesus. He has better brand awareness than Apple, and more locations nationwide than Starbucks. And now that I mention it, I'd much rather be woken up at 5 a.m. by a barista handing me a grande mocha caramel frappuccino. And don't get me wrong, this isn't exclusive to religious beliefs. The same goes for vegetarians, libertarians, conspiracy theorists, and your average run-of-the-mill crazy person. I don't want to hear about it because, and here's the bottom line, good things, be they ideas or coffee, don't have to be forced on people. Americans will readily seek out things that they like. Which is why I seek to avoid any of the people who do all of the things on this list. So what gets under your skin? What really annoys the crap out of you that people do in public? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be alerted the next time I release a video here on YouTube. And until next time, keep being awesome.